All right. Today on the podcast, we have Ron Fellows. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ron is a Canadian Motorsports Hall of Famer, um, you know, all round Canadian racing legend. He's won Le Mans, he's won Daytona, he's won NASCAR races. Uh, he's probably the winningest uh, foreign uh, NASCAR racer, being a Canadian. He's one of the winningest Trans Am racers of all time. Um, super nice guy. Uh, glad he could come out and, uh, you know, a guy who, who gives back to the sport through karting, through uh, owning uh, part of uh, CTMP, what was most port. Um, just a genuine, genuine good guy and uh, happy to have him on the podcast. Yeah, I've got, um, I guess it was about this time last year, came across my old Trans Am car from 95, 96. Okay. Yeah, so what happened was that it was the Sunoco livery in 96. The Camaro. Camaro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there was we used the, the 95 chassis. It was the 95 chassis. Anyway, we raced it uh, at different livery in 95 and um, raced – uh, raced yeah, raced it eleven races in ninety five, and I won five races in ni in the ninety five season out of eleven, and then we used that car with the Sunoco livery for the first race at St. Pete, won that one, and then a collector bought it like right out of Victory Lane. Interesting. So there so were collectors back in in. Oh yeah, the, this okay. guy. Yeah, this guy didn't even want to clean. It had the champagne and the yep the confetti confetti stuff. Yeah, no, no, don't don't touch it. Okay, and he and he bought it. And that that chassis, so that chassis was had won, we won six of twelve races with it. And um, so, and I forget the guy's name that bought it. Anyway, he he uh, uh, somehow Patrick Ryan, mm -hmm. who races in SVRA, has one of the Donahue Camaros. Yep. Anyway, he um, he ended up he ended up telling him, hey, if you ever want to sell it. I want, you know, I want it. I'll, okay. Anyway, he ended up getting it. And the thing was that I was at, the, it was the SVRA race in, I'm thinking 2018 at, at uh, VIR that, uh, um, all-star thing they okay. were doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. And, um, somebody, somebody says, Oh, your old Trans Am car's here. I'm thinking, what old Trans Am? Your Sonoga car. What? Nah. Anyway, so I go and find it. And the thing looks like it's, I mean, it was just immaculate how how well it had, you know, since 96. Yep. Stayed all, all the decals and climate controlled. It had never been out until this guy, Patrick Ryan, brought it out. That's cool. And, and yeah, no, I'm looking at this thing. And, and then he <laughs> I, I said to him, well, let me know if you ever want to sell it. Then he starts telling me about, well, you know, Tommy Kendall's championship car from uh, 98 sold oh. for... Seven hundred and eighty thousand. And I said, so I'm, and I know the history of this chassis, but yep. I'm, I'm like, well, you know, I never won a championship with that car, so it's, it's, it's not worth anywhere. It's, <laughs> it's not the one you think it was. No. It's a different serial number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he uh, two years later, he, I guess he tried to run it again. He said this thing's, and he's in his seventies. Yeah. This guy, and he just said this car's way too much for me. If you want it, and I said, well, you know, I think the numbers you were talking before is way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he made us uh, made us an unreal deal. Good. And my sponsor, AER from Texas, he ended up buying it. I, we couldn't even go and see it because of COVID. Wow. And he was sending pictures. And I'm like, okay, Bob. I, and I called Buzz McCall, our old team owner, and I checked with Dan Binks, my crew chief from Corvette Racing. What do you think? This is what it is. And here's the – he said, dude, if you don't buy it, I'm buying it. I said, okay. Sounds like we're getting a good deal. That's anyway, good. So we, we've got it, and they're slowly putting it, putting the engine in it and – so yeah. are, are you building a collection of old cars that you've raced? I would like to. Yeah. Um, I I don't really have I don't I don't have the space. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, are you a, are you a car guy outside of race cars? Not really. But yeah. but enough of a car guy that you want the old cars that you race. It's not just a tool to go. No, no. I I mean, it, it you know certainly the certainly the the Trans Am stuff was was cool in the in the connection with with one of my longtime sponsors in Texas AER manufacturing 
Um, they they have they have one of my race trucks. They have one of my uh, Xfinity cars. They've got now they've got this Trans Am car, and I would love to be able to find my the 2007 Cup car that I raced for uh, Roger Staubach and Troy Aikman. Okay, it yep. was the number 96. Yeah, uh, um, I can't remember exactly. It was it was Hall of Fame racing, but I can't remember right what the sponsor <laughs> was. But, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I did I did the two I did two road courses for Staubach and Aikman that team, and God, it was it was so cool. I loved, and that was the first year of the the COT Car of Tomorrow. Right, big high CG had a rear wing and yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I'd love to. Deal. Yeah, it's just I don't even know where that you'd find something like that, but yeah, I should have bought it. I should have bought it from them right at the end of that year because they ended up they end up switching to uh, Toyota along with Gibbs, right. and then it was a bust, and that was the end of it. Yeah, that's the best time to buy race cars is right after the race, yeah. <laughs> especially if they're significant. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, but sorry to get sidetracked. No, no, yeah, it's all good. On. But I want to I want to start or that was our start. But I want to start with the beginning of your career in oh. in karting and how did you get into karting? Because it's almost always you know your dad has yeah. some influence in getting into racing. You know, right? Because the majority of the effort is is his. <laughs> yeah. Um, Depending on your age. Yeah. Not in not in uh, not in our ho- household. My my dad was uh, an Anglican minister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And his his interest in cars was uh, zero. They were transportation. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, the influence was my my uncle, my mom's brother. Okay, he was uh, into rallying, and uh, he took my brother and I to the Canadian Grand Prix in '69, and that was our first exposure to, to really car racing. Right, and then um, started karting in the actually the in I guess this is probably mid '70s. 74, 75. So your, f- your first exposure, you're 10 years old. 10 or 11, to, yeah. 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 You go see it, and is it, I want to do that, or you're oh, now you're was, hooked, you're watching it on yeah, TV? Yeah, no, this is, and I've said it before, for, you know, an 11-year-old to have an epiphany, that was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I got to get on the other side of the fence. It, you know, I, I get goosebumps just thinking about it now. Just the, you know, sitting, you know, getting there when it's dark and going, you know, getting there early to sit in the front straight grandstands, which is where... The, the event center is now at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, but um, and it wasn't reserved seating, so he got there early so he could get as high up as possible. We were on the very top row. Right. My uncle, his his buddy John Cross, who remains a friend to this day, and my brother Rob, and um, you know we're we're waiting, and then the in the warm up, it was the first thing at eight or eight thirty in the morning, and wow, it was just when they came around, you know eight nine ten. It was like, oh, this is so cool. I think the, the first one that came by was the, the Matra, yeah, the twelve cylinder. Well, I yeah. mean, like how, like I remember watching my first F one race, but I had been to a whole ton of racing yeah. beforehand. Yeah, that was the first car race I've ever knocked, been to. Knocked my yeah. socks off, so yeah. I couldn't imagine your first yeah. exposure being yeah. Formula One. Yeah, and then it's and it's uh, how do I, <laughs> how do I do this? Well, then my 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 uncle's friend John, John, he was. He decided to stop rallying, mm-hmm. and he got he got into karting. Okay. So that was kind of the the uh, the entry point. But we, you know, you ended up, you know, you're delivering newspapers, and yeah, you know, basically took probably a year and a half to get enough money to to buy a cart. And where are you living at this point? Bra- in uh, Brampton. Brampton. Bramley. When did you guys yeah. move from Windsor? Uh, we actually went Windsor, Sarnia, Port Huron, Michigan, mm-hmm. then and then uh, settled in the. Uh, Bramley, now Brampton. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We lived in the D section. <laughs> I don't know if anyone will know. <laughs> Any, anybody from Bramley will know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. were in the F section. Yeah. The Maybe Al, Al Bowden will know. <laughs> yeah, no, he will. Yeah. yeah. No, it was crazy. In, in Bram, Bramley, they had all, they were A section because all the, they were, they were sectioned where all the street names started with A, B, C, D, and okay. there was nothing north of Highway 7 at that point. So... Your uncle's friend starts karting. Yeah, it was. He got into it. I think when we we got interested in it, mm-hmm. and uh, and initially, Rob and I shared a cart. Right. And and the first racing we did was uh, with the North Halton Cart Club in Georgetown, Ontario. You yeah. know, we're on the same street. Really? Yep. 
It's just up fifth line. Up fifth line. Yeah, yeah. I had a look on Google Maps the other day and I found it in the backyard. I know Somebody's exactly backyard. which house. Yeah. 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 Oh wow. Yep. So we're on the same street. I, as I wonder. I wonder if there is. Uh, I wonder if the asphalt's there. It is a little Probably. bit. Yeah. The uh, the timing and scoring hut you can see on Google Earth. No. Yep. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go sneak back there. Yeah. Right. Well, they were, and that was those were. Uh, it was relatively close close to home, and they were Saturday nights. They were racing oh. Saturday nights. I think there were three lights around the around the back. Yeah. <laughs> there, one section it got it was. It got dark in the back there <laughs> in the trees. But anyway, that was that was sort of the first exposure to uh, the carting. And then, you know, and then it was uh, we need to get, you know, another cart, another cart and get 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 to understand how to be more competitive. And and we ended up uh, hooking up with uh, Winter Circle, which was Scott Goodyear's dad. OK. Ran that. And he was he was super helpful. Don Don was helpful for both Rob and I. We ended up buying buying a couple of chassis from from uh, Winter Circle and and Don let us do the the never never plan and he just okay. had on yeah on a bulletin board he had our names yep and it had how much you know here's the total and then every, you know, whenever we could we brought some cash money in and yeah he yeah it was he was super helpful yeah we, we got our engines from engines from Winter Circle and the chassis and yeah. so y you were running against Scott he was in. Um, I was on my way out of karting when he was, he's a couple of years younger than me, but okay. um, he ran, he ran the light class. He was in the same class as my brother, right? my brother Rob. Yeah. So we were, I was in, these were the McCullough chainsaw motors yep. back then. Yep. Yeah. So he was, Rob was running Reed light and I was in Reed heavy. So being a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so you're running karting. Do you, do you have great success in karting? Or, or is it just a stepping stone to try and get to formula cars? No, we, yeah, no, we, um, uh, I would say, yeah, decent success. Um, money was still, a, still a problem. You know, you're racing, you're occasionally racing, you know, I never did like a whole club championship or anything sure. like that. So we, you know, we picked and, and choose, we would pick and choose what we were going to go to Georgetown, uh, um, Goodwood, Goodwood. Yeah. I went to, uh. Uh, Mount Forest, where there was a cool kart track there. There was um, the OKRA back then had a yep. series, and sort of followed a few of those. Picton, um, I think there was a I can't remember the name of it. The track in Windsor, I don't know if that's the it's the same one in the Windsor area now. Uh, um, the Point Pelly. Point Pelly, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's if it's the same or not, but um, yeah, no, we we had. Uh, I think part of the problem was having. Not having a great deal of of mechanical knowledge, sure, uh, is tough. And and karting back then was really meant for they they were it was for men who wanted to play in an expensive level. Yeah, like the fact that I'm running in a I'm running as a as a fifteen, sixteen, seventeen year old against mostly men, mm -hmm. and the requirements are, are with this hundred cc motor. To run methanol, jeez, I don't know anything about running methanol. Right. Well, you learn the hard way about yeah. what it does to materials other than metal, yeah. aluminum, rubber. You know, you learn the hard way. Huh. So it's it's, but it's uh, anyway. It was it was. Um, I mean, we I mean, we had we had tons of fun. Fanshawe was another track we ran in London. It yeah. was kind of fun. Um, and my uncle. Who was rallying? He he bought a uh, a B sedan that that's in five ten. Okay. So this is now seventy seven, seventy eight, maybe, and um, I get I'm able to get my license right. in that car. Yeah. So I got my license and then did uh, did a few B sedan races. Actually, my very first race was at Trombla. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's an intimidating track to do oh, your first. Oh yeah, race especially with. when you arrive at night. <laughs> you have and the only place you run this. That's in five ten is Shannonville. Yeah. So anyone who <laughs> doesn't know just Shannonville, yeah. you can see yeah. the you can see every corner from the pits. Yeah. We we we, <laughs> I, I'll never forget we we drove in at I don't know probably two in the morning, and there's still some light, and we're trying to find a place to park, and we're gonna pitch a tent, and all I can see is pavement. Namur. Yeah. <laughs> Going up up and down the side of this hill. <laughs> so oh wow. Anyway, it was it all. All worked so out. So how'd you run? I ended up winning the class, yeah, and I had no idea. 
Good. Yeah. You had no idea you won it? No. <laughs> no, because you're you're right. There was probably two or three classes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There, there's no. We didn't have didn't have radios. Didn't have. You know, pit board. Yep. No, just, just go out and you're run just hard. Ju- yeah, you're just driving around and in a multi class. Yep. And then, hey, you won. Really? Oh, cool. <laughs> so at this point, you're still just doing it for fun. Yeah. You're you're hooked, obviously. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're th- that's all you're thinking about. That's all you want to do. Are you doing any other sports? Did you play any other sports when you were young? Um, yeah, no, I played uh, I, I played hockey, hockey in the Bramley area, Bramley, Brampton, just house league and then yep. high school football. Really yep. enjoyed that. Um, that was, yeah, pretty much it. But then, then when the racing took over. Yeah, it was, yeah, working at uh, working at a gas station during the winter. Yep. Uh, pumping gas and then it became a self-serve <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and yeah. uh and camps worked at camps in the summertime and yep. and uh, that's what helped pay for the pay for the carting and then it was ended up uh working for uh, a natural gas company that was based in brampton uh, and that was right out of high school and yeah no it was just all a means to an end you know, right let's you know what can i how can I get access to money? Next step for me was I wanted to go race a, a what is now Formula sixteen hundred. Yep. And um, ended up buying an old Lotus, and yeah, I had some buddies that were helping me, high school buddies uh, who helped, and and we had no clue what we were doing. <laughs> and, and so you guys, you bought the car yourself. Yep. Yeah. And you ran it out of your house garage. Uh, we we ended up um, we ended up. There was a, a guy in Brampton that I knew. Um, it was a guy by the name of Dennis Edwards, and he he was he was super keen. I'd met him in Cardi. Yeah, he worked for uh, uh, this magazine. It was a uh, Muscle magazine. Okay. And they were based in Brampton, and he ended up letting us use part of the some gave us some shop space to right. use. Yeah. So. So you're running that. And are you like are you fast right out of the box? Are you winning winning races in the no, Formula Six? No, no, okay. no, no. We we were we rarely the first first year we were running we rarely finished. Right. Yeah. Stuff breaking. And oh yeah. yeah. It was it was frustrating. And, and then you're and then you're you're learning constantly. It was an old car. Um, you know we're running when I when I when I got you know the the next year in '79 I ended up hooking up with. Um, uh, Wayne Penny, who had run, he'd run a successful operation. So I ended up, um, Wayne was super helpful in, in providing some, and he'd run a um, uh, Formula, Formula, Formula Ford uh, team before, back in the Bulliba days. So he knew his stuff. Yep. And this was, you know, we were just, again, based on how much money I had, uh, we had, I ended up sharing a car with, uh, with Randy Packham. Okay. So yep. yeah, so we ended up doing some club races, a couple of pro Ford races, and yeah, no, we never won a race, but we were we were generally, uh, you know, in the uh, podium a couple times. Okay. But yeah. So you you've got a taste of you know you're not you know you know you're you're capable on the yeah. right day. Yeah. So you do that. You're running. Still four, running an old car. Yeah. We, and right. And that. And you're running the two. Th- then you go and run two thousands or during the same time. Well, what, yeah, what happened was uh, we I ended up I ended up we ended up going separate ways mm-hmm. with in 1980. So I basically did nothing. Yep. And then um, bought bought a uh, bought a new Hawk in '81, a Hawk MK21. It was it was a pretty car. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a great car, uh, but it was all like it all like it uh, it was. It was a super good deal. Yep. So I ended up ended up getting one of those, but I couldn't afford to run it. Right. I did maybe half a dozen races with it, and and basically went broke. And then the next year, eighty two, the, the 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 sort of marquee class at at uh, the Grand Prix and and uh, CTMP Motorsport back then became they introduced Formula Two Thousand. Right. So everybody that had sixteen hundreds. They were now a club race car only, so now this eighteen thousand dollar car that I bought in nineteen eighty one. Wow, wow, is yeah. obsolete. Is ob- it's yes, it's, it's worth maybe fifty percent, if that, because it's now a club race car, and I've got, I got, 
I got myself in a terrible debt, and I was probably, you know, because I, I borrowed the money for that, and then I ended up borrowing money for the 2000s. For the, no, for, uh, I didn't run. No, I okay. tried to run. I tried to run 81 and 82, tried to do some club races, and I just, you know, I could do a few. Yep. And I ended up, I don't know, it was probably $50,000 in debt. Wow. Yeah. And who was that to? Um, combination of a bank, credit union, and credit cards. Wow. And uh, interest rates back then were 21, 22%. <sighs> yeah. It so was did bad. you, how did you get out of that? Well, I was working, I was working in, uh, I was working for this natural gas company and, and I ended up, I started there working as a laborer and then end up, okay, we're in, what's the highest earning spot I can get here? <laughs> and it was either a machine operator or a welder. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to weld. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, so I ended up, yeah, so I ended up uh, getting, uh, after a few years, getting in a position to be a machine operator. So I was. So you paid it off. I was digging trench. Yeah, no, I, okay. I, 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 yeah, my, my, uh. Uh, I'll never forget. My dad was, he got some financial advice that you should probably just declare bankruptcy. I said, no, I'm going to figure out how to pay this off. Yeah. So yeah, you know, for four or five, maybe, I can't remember, six years, maybe. So you were just working. There was no more racing yeah, during that no, time. No. And I was miserable. Right. Yeah. No, it was misery. So you, you know still I mean? had racing in your head during those years. 100%. That you were going to go yep. back to racing. S somehow. Yeah. Right. So then from there, something to do with driving school. Yeah, it was 1985, and there's this, there's this, uh, these beautiful new Reynard Formula 2000 cars, and there's this guy, Richard Spernard, and, and his partner, Ray David, had started the Spernard David Racing School in uh, Shannonville with these brand new two-liter cars, yep. and they were going to run them on slicks. And I'm like, this is... That's a real race yeah, car. Yeah, so, so I ended up meeting Richard at the auto show, and he talked about this scholarship program they have. And I thought, oh, this is probably the only, only hope I've got is, is maybe, you know, win a, go through the scholarship program and win a whole season in his school series. Right. And at that time, the winning the school series, you got a, you got a full, full ride or half a dozen races or something in, in, uh, the, what was then, I think the Canadian tire formula 2000 series. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we I ended up uh, getting enough money to to go do a two day school, mm -hmm. two day advanced, and then I entered this scholarship thing. And there was R R Richard. Richard was pretty smart about it all. There mm -hmm. was I don't know sixty some guy paid. Yeah, I think it was eight or nine hundred bucks. Because <laughs> you're gonna, you're going to get about fifteen thousand dollar oh for sure full yeah. season right. Yep. And then, <clears throat> and it came down. There were, it, I, I recall it being a couple of days of uh, of eliminations. Yep. And I got down to the final five. And they, Emmer Shards, like, yeah, you're doing great, you're doing great. So then, and then, he, and then, what he did was for the final five, five or six, I can't remember. It was Stefan Pru was in it, myself, Claude Bourbonnet, um Joe Herger and I can't remember if his brother was Hans was in it as well. Anyway, there's there was a, there was five or six and, and they and what he decided to do was it was a two lap cumulative lap time and he put the car on on street tires. Oh, yeah, changed it up. And I had and and I I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget it. Richard's uh, you know we're, we're going to figure out how to do a draw here. Does anybody anybody want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Yeah, was it the learned from that move. one? Yeah. Well, and I'd never the, the other guys had come from had done the Jim Russell school, which and they run on a they run on a, a street tires. tire. Yeah. And I leave the pits and I'm booking into turn two at Shannonville and this thing doesn't stop and it doesn't turn. Anyway, I didn't win. So So then how do you how do you continue on racing? I did I ended up doing I got enough money to do a couple of a couple of his school races, which I which I won, won a couple of them, and and um, but that was all the money I had. Yep. But I got to know Richard, and and I think I think he we we, we chatted last year about sort of going going over this, and he recalled thinking you know you know I was I was a pretty good guy, and I 
I was pretty passionate about it all, and, and he ended up hiring me to work at his school. Okay. So that's how, that was sort of the 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 break to get into the industry. Sure. And you're 21, 22, kind of. Uh, 80. 85 no no i'm 27 okay yeah 27 yep yeah yeah okay. so 27 28 so i've heard rumors that you lied about your age no i didn't i um so i was born in 57 and what happened was so the so i ended up going to work for richard and the the um and it was actually really helpful I ended up <clears throat> ended up uh um, when I made that transition, uh, in, it was probably about this time in 1986, players, players, cigarettes and general motors announced this single make series, right? There's basically showroom stock Camaro and Firebird drive them to the track and race them. Right. So and the best, the, the best news to any race car driver. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, but there was prize money, <laughs> right? This, this. You know this 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 was an eighteen, eight about twenty grand for a for a car. Yep. And at the time, I didn't have twenty grand, but they they financed it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I was still paying off when I afford this. <laughs> but anyway, so um, you and Richard decide you're both going to go run. Yeah, yeah, okay. and I and he the school, the school would pay pay my entry fees, and and I was just basically using leftover tires from his his shop and i would basically drive my drive the car to the track and then it would sit under their right under their hauler and so the gm yeah. player series you guys both have cars you drive it to the track who's prepping the car uh i had i had i was doing it myself with one of the guys at uh spinard the spinard david school it was yep. helping me yeah i mean it was pretty pretty straightforward just you know fresh brakes and we didn't know what we were doing so right I but mean, Richard had it. So Richard and Ray David had that had a team, and um, so there was Raymond. Raymond raced as well. Richard, I think there's one other guy, and I was kind of off the back of the okay, <laughs> off the back of the trailer. <laughs> so you're running was, that, and you're running pretty good, top fives. Yeah, no the the uh, the. Um, and a st like for anyone who doesn't know, it's stout field. How many like sixty guys at some oh, races? Oh, yeah. You know, I it's it's funny. I think I s was talking about this this not long ago. I came across the qualifying sheet from the first race in at at uh, then Mosport in 1986, and there were 76 cars. Jeez. Yeah, I remember being so bummed that I was fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Richard, Richard is like, hey, Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. Look, you could be that guy. Yeah, <laughs> <No, laughs> that would feel bottom. a lot worse. Oh, yeah, yeah, good point, good point. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So you're having success there, but that, does that, like, that feels like pro racing to you, and you're now racing? No, I mean, it was, I mean, it was still, it was still a struggle. Um, You know, and I, and, 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 and learning how, learning how to drive, you know those cars. Uh, it, it took a bit to adapt. I mean, I could I could do a fast lap, sure, but you know, race crap. I was overdriving constantly. So it, you know, and Richard was a big help to, uh, you know, because he raced in Trans Am and whatnot. And and these were, these were you know the same kind of finesse required mm -hmm. with uh, something like a Trans Am car. Um, these were you know, the miniature versions, yep. you know, they're on street tires. Yeah. They only had 225 horsepower, but they didn't stop. Brakes didn't last. And, and, uh, and the tires were the street tires. Right. So it was that, you know, figuring out how to, how to make lap time and not burn the car. Yeah. Down. No, yeah. I, you know, I remember numerous times in practice, I'd, I'd go out and follow Richard briefly and, and I'd, just marvel how, how's he doing that and then and then and then he'd follow me and i'd be you know i'd be sailing through turn one all arms and elbows and i'd look over at the exit of one and he's pulling up beside me right you know because he's just nice and smooth anyway so it was just there was a it was a learning curve um but we ended up um ended up destroying my car at the the toronto indy what happened there lost brakes Ooh, that went in backwards. 
and just absolutely crush this car. Turn one or three? Uh, I think it was it's in, it was in the back. Oh, just, just after the kink. Thing. Yeah, yep. the heartbreaking. Oh, for, was that eight or the, nine the, or something? The big like that. sweeper there. Yeah, just before that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just before the the there's a right and left before pit in. Yep. Yeah. So the right then oh, by okay. the by the train station. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I went backwards in and just crushed this thing and and uh the the dealer um the dealer fixed the car and i'm like i got no money <laughs> and i ended up i ended up missing missing a race because it wasn't fixed and then the first the next race was the the indy car race at san air on a seven eighth mile trial and i literally pick up the car from what was then golden mile chevrolet and the, the roundtree fam family uh scott roundtree was a was running the dealership then it was super he's like don't worry about it we'll we'll figure this out later just just go race that's cool and the paint was still wet on this thing and we're and i'm driving it to san air i'm thinking oh, what am i doing this is, we're going to a we're going to an oval you know i have every opportunity here to wreck this thing again oh yeah <laughs> and um anyway um the uh, we we basically followed what Richard and Ray were doing with with alignment. Setup, yeah. Yeah. And I ended up qualifying second and I won the race. That works. Yeah. And it was what a relief. Yeah. yeah. It's and so it, it's so funny that that when you win a race it's just relief. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well it was it was the, the biggest relief was it paid five grand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is 1986. Oh, uh, anyway, good. but it was it, you know there were in that year the the two to the two big events, the two big races, because they were on live TV, was uh, Toronto Indy, uh, Molson Indy, Toronto, and Molson Indy, Quebec. Right. And uh, so that was on, yeah, back then when, <laughs> back when there was CTV, Wide World Sports. And, yeah. And, and anyway, Chris Akanamaki was doing the, uh, doing the color, and I got to meet Chris. And it's funny, Chris Akanamaki was, a, was when I ended up uh, getting an opportunity to race in the U.S., he was super helpful in, in providing me with uh, uh, letters of recommendation to get a to get into the country. Oh, yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was, but it was, yeah. It was a last lap, last corner, pass for the win. Oh, that's yeah, great. It was, Nothing yeah, better. It was, it was great. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was five grand. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a lot these it, days to win now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you run, you're running the player yeah. series, and then would you say your break happens in '89? Um, well, there was, there was a bit of a break, even going, you know, going into the 87 season, uh, Canadian tire ended up, ended up, uh, becoming a sponsor at the school. Okay. Uh, with a, a new Camaro school we were doing and, and also the, it was the Motormaster race team. And so they, they wanted Richard cause he was the reigning champ. Yep. And, um, anyway, Richard was helpful in getting me to be his, be the, the other driver so we yeah so i had a paid ride that's great yeah, and you didn't have to go time. hustle that sponsorship no, it came to you guys no no ended up uh ended up finishing second into the championship should have won it mm -hmm. um that's another story i'm not going to tell but <laughs> so you're on you're on the radar with yeah. a big time sponsor yeah. do you feel that you're a pro race car driver yet well and, uh, and when do you when do you decide that you're going to be a pro race car driver uh, since I was 11. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was just the, the road is long. <laughs> right. Like all things. Yeah. So, so the next really interesting break happened. So the, the uh, September, uh, series, I think it was the series finale for players GM at, uh, uh, CTMP in September it was part of the Trans Am weekend. So on the practice day, um, Gordy Oftedal, who was running a two car Trans Am team, Richard had driven for him. Anyway, on the on the test day, he comes into the into our into our uh, under the tent, and he's looking for Richard. And he's a big burly old guy, and he's complaining his his two drivers haven't showed up, and he needs somebody to shake the cars down. And and Ray David, Ray David was standing there, and it's well Richard's not here. I was wearing my suit, mm -hmm. and. Ray said, "Here, take run. He's he's good. Put him in." And then Gordy, Gordy's like, "Who are you?" I, I said, I'm "My Richard's teammate. My name's Ron Fellows." He said, yep. "I think I heard of you. Follow me." 
So I ended up shaking down his two Buick Trans Am cars. Yeah. And it was just oh, so cool. 600 and something horsepower. And it, and it went really well. Yep. Unfortunately, his drivers did show up. Right. But Gordy, the my lap time would have put us somewhere in the top 10 for just for... And, and you were just cruising, or did you know that you wanted to, to lay down a decent lap? I was just driving the car, having fun. Okay. Yeah. I, hell, I spun once. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and I en- ended up driving both cars. Okay. And, uh, and gave them a bunch of feedback on, you know, yep. what little I knew, but you know, here's here's what it needs to be comfortable. And Gordy was like, we got to get you in a car. We got to get you in a car. You know, can you get some money together? Right. So, and I said, I got no money. Um, anyway, we ended up, we ended up putting together a deal. So, so, um, after the, this was probably late September, early October, mm-hmm. we were the Trans Am race at Road Atlanta in 87. I ended up, I, I got my, I got my $5,000. So back then in the Players GM series, you had to, you had to put down a $5,000, um, bond. So if you got, if you got caught cheating, oh, you know, driver infractions yep. you know yep. doing anything modifications to the car you forfeit this you would forfeit this bond oh, that's a pretty good deterrent oh yeah yeah so i so i so i told gordy he says all i've got is i got five grand canadian coming back and and this, that's all i that's all i have yep oh okay well, you, well would you buy tires sure i'll pay for tires yeah so i ended up ended up uh, going to road atlanta and we qualified seventh and finished fourth first wow. yeah so it must have turned some heads yeah 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 and that's how i ended up meeting uh lee white with roush racing and um it sort of that uh, was the that was the entry into the Tran- into trans, trans am, am. Yeah. so was, guys uh, in trans am knew who you were and then tell me about well he sort i think they i mean i think i think uh the, the players gm series was is so unique it was big uh, enough. Even, yeah it was big enough to where you know the the on track magazine followed it, mm-hmm. and and the Rothmans Porsche was a big deal, and and he had he had three tobacco companies right. supporting three different series, Exporty with two thousand eventually, mm-hmm. and then Rothmans with Porsche, but but the Players GM series was the biggest just because of the number of it was it was it was the least expensive and it had the it had great prize money and had all the great venues, right? So it was so you had you had big entry and right. it was and it was marketable. Right. So I think that was that was uh, but I you know I w- I'm an unknown. Yeah. Um going on my first Trans Am race. So but yep. we were yeah, we were first normally aspirated. So with with Gordy's car. Yeah, it was it was um and it end up uh ended up um Goodyear ended up I think I had to I had a bill for three sets of tires. Yep. And Goodyear ended up giving me two sets for free. Oh, perfect. Yeah, based on Yeah, cuz part of the story ended up being we we uh, we ran the soft a soft compound set. You know, they had two or I think there were two different compounds, and we ran the soft ones. Yep, and made them work. So that was a story. Uh, so the Goodyear, yeah. So they liked that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So then, how do you get your full time ride in Trans Am? Ah, uh, well, it, it it's it took a while. Yeah. Um, but as so the so the next transition is, um, I feel like. I feel like to get to the next step, I need to be doing my own thing mm-hmm. um, because, uh, you know, Richard's sort of the, he's, he's the guy. Yep. And I need to kind of break out of his shadow to some degree. And uh, so I ended up, and again, the, the, the working at the racing school was great because I made contacts there. Right. And what happened was um, we heard that Sunoco was looking to sponsor somebody in the series. And I ended up getting a call from uh, a guy by the name of Brad Brown, who worked for, it was his his agency that was handling the Sunoco account. Well, you know, Brad tells a story of this stack of proposals of everybody that wants to sponsor by Sunoco, and he's leaping through them. But he recognized, and I, and I had sent one. Yep. And uh, he recognized my name because he had been at the Spinar Davis School for a, for a corporate event and knew Richard a little bit, and that's so that's how it started. So ended up getting Sunoco in '88, and and then got and I'd met uh, Jim O'Donnell, who was the president of McKenzie Financial, 
through uh, uh, just a weird coincidence, he he was a big fan. Right. So and he was sponsoring he was sponsoring a car in the Players GM series, but he was he came by the our paddock area after I won it at uh, the, the Molson Indian San Air, and just just introduces himself and says hi. That was just great to watch and fantastic. Blah, blah. And so then I try to track him down. Yep. So I ended up ended up so that was the between. You know, Sonoco and then McKenzie Financial, uh, and, and and Jim was super passionate about it. He he was the he was the one that actually helped as a reward for winning. I think I, I think eighty nine, eighty eight, eighty eight. It won Toronto and Montreal, and uh, in the Players GM Series. So as a reward, he he sponsored me for a couple of Trans Am races in eighty eight right. with Roush in the in the Turbo Mercure. And then that turned into, I still didn't get a full time ride. I, I ended up with a, but I ended up with a pole and a, and a podium in the in the two. Um, Eighty nine. I ended up winning the championship on the Trans Am weekend and, and ended up winning my first Trans Am race. And it was again, it was another, another season of putting together enough money to do three. Right. With Roush. So you're working like in the winter time <coughs> or the off season. You're working full time, like balls to the wall, to find money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as well as having some come to you during yeah. that time well, because of your performance. Yeah, because we're trying. We're trying to. You know, we. You know, initially the, the the budget we had in '88, it was for my brother and I, and it was it was not a lot of money, uh, but it was a, it was a foot in the door. You mm -hmm. know, the Sunoco's wanted to get their feet wet, and then based on winning. Mm -hmm. You know, and then essentially looking at uh, looking at the TV coverage and essentially providing them with a with a, a report with a freaking stopwatch about how many times we we're on TV and the, you know what an ad cost and this was oh, that's <laughs> way, way ahead of yeah, yeah no yeah. I ended up we ended up getting yeah a pretty substantial a substantial raise based on the success we had in in '88 and and uh, and that so then we had a solid two car effort. Yep. For my brother and I, and, and uh, we had a third guy, Terry Betts. Um, yeah, we had we basically had a our own team. Yeah, so it was that was the that was the step, and and then um, again, it just it just took a while to 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 get in a position to do a full time to full time. But it was through it was through Jack. Yeah, Jack Roush. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, when I won the I won the championship in the Players Gym Series, eight, that, so that was eighty nine, and it was a uh, crazy weekend and I ended up crashing and qualifying and what track is this most sport okay yeah yeah it was it had rained in turn one anyway i won't go into it. we i was upside down in turn one wrecked the car yeah so i now have to you know championship on the line i got to start at the back yeah and and who's car again? my our, we had a, we actually had a backup car oh, okay yeah fortunately yeah yeah so i started last and it was just uh there was no hope sure and richard's Richard's second, I think, and those were points. We're now even on points to start the race, something like that. And there was there was no hope. Well, there was a wreck and a red flag on the on the first lap, second lap of a second lap of the next restart. There was another wreck and takes out a pile of cars, including Spinard, oh. in turn three. Did you know this at the time? Well, no. We're I'm just trying to. Yeah, weave yeah. my way from the back. But during mm. the yellow, did someone get on the radio and say, "Hey, oh, I saw, Spinard. I okay, saw, so you I knew saw Spinard was out. but I, it doesn't really register, right? Yeah, it's right. you know, well, I'm thinking he's got a backup car. Well, he couldn't because the race had already started. Yeah, he couldn't get into a backup car. But it was a, yeah, just a, it was the 50 mile race that took like two hours. <laughs> but I ended up ended up winning the championship, and then that afternoon, uh, winning the winning my first Trans Am race. So that's good. So now yeah. you're you're on the map, you know, if you're winning the championship yeah. and the Trans Am. Yeah, race. no, Jack was, but I still didn't have, I still didn't have a ride. Jack, Jack Roush was, he was super nice. I went to the, I went to the first Trans Am race in Phoenix, which was part of the Formula One race. I think it was in March of 90. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was talk of, of me getting an opportunity with Ford and with Roush and it just, but it didn't, hadn't come together. And so I'm at Phoenix and I'm pleading with Jack, please, anything, you know, what, you know, I'll, 
I'll take another limited season, but give me something. Yeah. And any any so they called me to the shop after the after the Phoenix race, and he said, "I think we got we got something for you. You're gonna be the you'll be the fourth car. Um, we've got the Motocraft and uh, this company out of Texas called AER, and they're real nice folks. And if they if they like you, they might stick with you." <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a good horse day. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that was, so I did, I, I think we did, I don't know, 10, 10 or 11. Trans Am races. Yeah, yeah. with uh, with Motocraft and AER became uh, Bob and Helen McGraw in Addison, Texas. Yep. Um, and their company, AER Manufacturing, we we are friends and close to this day. Yeah, which is, yeah, they, when I, when I went to, uh, went to Chevy, they came with me and, and, um, yeah. Anyway, I ended up. Uh, we had a we had a podium in ninety, and then ninety one. Uh, I was the uh, kind of the only car with Jack. Okay. And there was no factory money, but it had a pretty lucrative uh, um, contingency, and Jack was trying to get, trying to get, uh, trying to get money from Ford again to do a factory team starting in ninety two, mm-hmm. and I, we ended up having a pretty good argument about things with with two or three races left in the yeah i was just i was just frustrated with the with the lack of performance we were having the same kind of mechanical things happen you know but but it was um i mean i understood later that the you know if if we're where is his bargaining bargaining position if if we're able to get success just racing for contingency money. Right. So. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> That's good. So anyway. So then you get on a you get on a tear in Trans Am. You become like one of the I don't know tear. Oh, I, I think looking back at it, I mean looking at the stats, you become one of the winningest yeah. Trans Am drivers of all time during those those years. Right. This, this is kind of the really long way around the barn, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then so you're you're running Trans Am and then what when does that kind of stop or when does that transition change? And I want to touch on, so you, you run Trans Am all the way up to what year? End of 96. Yeah. End of 96. Yeah. And then why does it go away? Um, good question. Uh, Chevy just pulled the plug. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, so yeah, I ran with, uh, so my, really my first full-time season was with, was with Ford and Tom Gloy in 92. So I did, okay. I did three seasons with Gloy and it was, uh, you know, I, if, if there's a, another one of these key moments, it was 94 in the Detroit race at uh, Belle Isle. So, um, I ended up, uh, uh winning the race mm-hmm. and it was the Chevy 200 <laughs> <laughs> and Herb Fischl, who was then head of GM racing, he's on the, he was on the podium okay. and he was the one handing me the trophy. Right, and he literally, out of the side of his mouth, says, "How do we get you in a Chevy?" Oh, yeah, okay, that's that's and nice I'm to like, hear. All you gotta do is call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Anyway, so yeah. he he ended up going through the, the the GM Canada guys, and and we ended up, uh, and that's how we became a a Chevy driver starting in '95. So '95, '96, um, yeah. I think I think there was. I don't know whether it was politics. But anyway, in in '96, there's no, there's no future in, in Trans Am. And now <clears throat> we just bought a house. Yep. And I don't have a, I have a contract with one year left, but nothing to race. Sure. And you're not making a whole ton of money, or are you? I'm making, I'm doing okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Yeah. No, okay. we were able to. So you're making a living racing. Yep. yep. But it's like N- not until I went till I went to Chevrolet did I, did I start making. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's but that's so really where I I I learned that um hey you know you're a you're a commodity that somebody wants. Right. So that's that's really the first time I felt like this was a Chevy really wanted me. Um yeah. And okay. I got a pretty substantial raise then. <laughs> but so how did the 97 333 SP deal happen? Oh yeah. Um yeah, so '97. So I, I'm still under contract with Chevy, uh, but nothing, nothing to race. So I can't remember what else. I, oh, it was, I started doing. Uh, I did a Bush race. 
back then the Xfinity Series. Got Watkins Glen for James Finch. Okay. And um, and then uh, tested with uh, with Team Thirty Four. Um, that I went really well, but they didn't really have a anything for me. Mm -hmm. They did it for Herb, um, and it was a Chevy team. And um, ended up. I don't know how it came together, but I ended up doing uh, some of the some of the truck races in '97. Yep. And um, so I ended up winning, winning at Watkins Glen, and and then somewhere in that window, because that was in August as well. But somewhere in that window, uh, Andy Evans, Andy Evans owned IMSA, mm -hmm. and he had his own team. Okay. And I and I get a call that you know from Andy like. Sure, this is Andy Evans. Sure, it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang then, up. No, on no, him. no. Yeah, no, no. We want you. We want you to. We want a local guy to run the run the thirty three thirty three with uh, with Rob Morgan. Yeah. And because he just bought he just bought Den Mosport, mm -hmm. and um, they were trying to you know get some local local talent to sell more tickets. Yeah. So yeah, that's a cool deal. That yeah. had to have been. Oh man, was it? Yeah. I, I remember testing the testing the car at uh, uh, in the, the test track that we actually used for so that the Trans Am team um, Chevy's Trans Am team was actually based in in Indy. Okay. And we would go out to the, the club track in Greencastle, Indiana, about forty minutes from from Indy. And so on their way back from Sonoma, this the Andy's IMSA team stopped there. I think I don't know if they were. I think they may have been based in India as well. I can't remember. Anyway, I got an opportunity to jump in the car to do a shakedown. Yep, and just kind of get comfortable with with it a little bit um, before. And fortunately, I did because it was the first sort of non-power steering car that I had right. driven that had downforce. Right. And I, I mean, I, it was. It's insane. It was yeah, sore thumbs, wrists, and. Okay, we got we got a few weeks here to <laughs> yeah, get stronger before the race. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, it all it, it all worked out. Yeah, we got 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 the pole and and uh, led a bunch, and then um, Rob got into Rob Morgan got into finish, and I th think he was running second, and I think somebody whoever was leading had to pit for fuel. Anyway, ended up winning. That's great. So yeah, it yeah, was that's cool. Great. Yeah. So you're running, you're running, uh, you start running uh, NASCAR stuff. And well, I mean, let me go back. W did you have a dream, like, you know, you grew up karting, your first, your first kind of witness to motorsports is Formula One. Mm -hmm. Did you have your eyes set on Formula One or just racing? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, the dream was, the dream was Formula One. And then it became very clear that, that, that the open wheel path was, you know, for a guy that's 6'2 and, 185 pounds then right um this isn't gonna work out i try i did a couple atlantic races in 90 and it was and it was in a um and we just did didn't do very well yeah so but it was it was really harvey hudis who was the um a long time owner of then most port that said ron you got no Right. There's and no future for you in open wheel cars. And put that in your head and you Yeah, he and he literally said, um, you know, the Trans Am IMSA manufacturers are spending money there and hiring drivers. Yep. If if you're if you're good enough, they'll find you. Right. And he was right. No. So then you're and I don't know and and maybe it's just my ignorance, but they weren't NASCAR wasn't hiring like hot shoes before kind of hot shoe road course guys too often before you came around i that yeah. dominated like you like you did and yeah. other trans am guys i i don't know yeah, yeah i yeah. um i think i think there were <clears throat> you know the dan gurney i think he won a did he won a did he win one at riverside sure, yeah or okay as, yeah. A, as a part-timer so yeah. the, you know, i'm the, sure there was yeah there, there was a few but yeah no it became it started to become a thing yeah. when you know the money got Big enough. Got yeah, sort of the that sort of late nineties into the two thousands. Yeah. Um, to go win a race was huge. Yeah, for a team. and just to show to show well. Yeah. Because uh, there were just so much, so much, uh, so much money there. So. Right. 
But so it, then did you did you <coughs> actively go and hunt those deals or did you just get phone calls and say, hey, Ron, we want you at the Glen in our truck? Bush yeah. Car. Well, no, I, I uh, th- with um, or Chevy, the 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 truck deal I got, I forget how I got I got introduced to uh, Billy Hess, but Billy ended up building a truck and we paid for it. Cool. Yeah, I got I bored. A, we bored an engine from. Buzz McCall, who was the team owner of the, the Chevy Trans Am team, he had gone into uh, um, the Xfinity series, and then he was going to get into the Cup series, um, and we ended up, he lent us a motor for this truck to go to the Glen, and we ended up we ended up winning, and it it paid almost 50 grand to win. That's great. Yeah. So we, you just flat out bet on yourself. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, but it was also a format where you didn't need a whole lot of crew, right? Yeah, it was the, it had the, I think ninety seven was the last year of the halftime break. Okay. So basically, at halfway, right, you got out. Yeah, and otherwise, you had five minutes. Yeah. You know, I got out and helped. Yeah. <laughs> change tires. You know, so but Billy was, uh, <clears throat> Billy was he was a he was a pretty sharp guy, and uh, you know he, he knew that okay this is a road course we got to. We have no idea what this motor is like, mm-hmm. but we do know one thing: we need to stop. And I'm like, yeah, because he says, "What, what, what do we got to do?" So we got to be able to stop real well, and and get around corners. And uh, he ended up, we had a pretty good truck and Alcon, Alcon brakes. And so you guys, just, so you just worked on the brakes, made sure it's yeah. We real. just yeah, we just made sure we had a really good brake package. Mm-hmm. And you know, back then. Um, there wasn't as much emphasis put on b- the majority of NASCAR teams, whether it was a truck series back then, Bush or, or cup, um, they would just get through the road courses. Right. Right. <clears throat> and, and, you know, they became a, a much bigger focus for everybody probably 10 years later. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Because you couldn't afford to take a race off. You're right. It just got, it got so competitive. So, but we ended up, uh, yeah, no, uh, winning, winning the race and, and, uh, um, we, that was, that was one of the few races where we actually made money. Yeah. Like it cost us about 35 grand to do the race and we got close to, <laughs> close to 50 in prize money. And, and my wife, Linda, she was the one, you know, hunting down all those decals around the fender. You, you, you know, one at a time hunting them down for the. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Hey, Ron, yeah. these yeah. NASCAR races. Yeah, this, <laughs> hey, this is, yeah, this is cool. Anyway. <laughs> but it was yeah. After that, after winning, after winning the Glen, yeah, I got a, I got the the first the call I got from. It was a couple of calls, but the one that, the one that I I chose to do was with uh, Nemco. And Nemechek. Yeah, Joe yep. Nemechek. Yeah, yep. and Brian Patty was the guy that called me in like six months before the race. Oh wow. Oh yeah, it was like December. That's loads of, of time. Ninety seven. Yeah. No. No. Hey, we want you to run our our car at the Glen. Yep. Anyway, I went down and, and met them, and and Brian was a kid. He was in his early twenties, and but super impressed by, you know, the 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 effort that Joe had, his his shop and the and the staff he had, and yep. and Brian was a really sharp kid. So yeah, we ended up uh, going to the Glen in '98 and winning. So you won yeah. two truck races. And it's funny, I, I've I've watched those races because I was watching, I've just watched every race at the Glen, you know, before <laughs> I ran there because I haven't run, I didn't run much there, still haven't. But what I noticed was how aggressive you turned in. Like it, it really huh. looked, it really looked like you were, t- you were steering the truck or the car, you know, you're kind of, f- it really looked like you were getting it to, you know, find where the grip was in the front wheels through the bus stop and everyone else was a little bit lazier. And you could kind of focus on the exit. Is yeah. that? Yeah. The did you have to visualize? Like, how did you learn? How did you just hop in a NASCAR and you were quick? Well, I think a lot of it would be based on uh, the lessons learned driving a showroom stock Camaro. Okay. Yeah, the the finesse. But there were certainly there's places where you can get more aggressive. Um, you know, the 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 bus stop, for example, was was a place that yeah you could be you could make time by you know. Entry speed, mm-hmm. you know, gathering it up in the middle of the bus stop. Right. So it was brake light, just chuck it in, gather it up in the middle, and then power out. Yeah. So, but it was always, I mean, I always felt like I was, uh, I was pretty, you know, pr- a pretty smooth driver. Oh, yeah. And, and, and we focused, we would focus on it. It quickly, 
in the first time I was there, it quickly became apparent that the key to speed was getting through turn one and getting through the S's because yeah. back then it wasn't flat. Right. And um, so it was a combination of messing with chassis and uh, uh, tire pressure to some degree, uh, a little bit of aero yep. tuning. And yeah, the, the, the dominance we had with, with Joe's, with Nemechek's cars were we, I could come out of turn one and it was up through the S's was flat. Right. And, and it wasn't that's hard in the, in the nationwide car. Yeah. 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 And yeah. yeah, we just, we just had to, and we, and we, and we could, and we could stop, you know? Um, but it was, yeah, no, there were, there were, um, those were, those were, those were fun, fun times. Yeah. Yeah. We ended up, um, it's funny in 90, so 98, we won. Then the next year, 99, I think, yeah, Joe ended up building a truck. Um, so we did, ended up having, they moved the, so back, back in the, in the nineties when the truck series started. Mm -hmm. So Watkins Glen, for example, have three weekends. June was the Bush series. Mm -hmm. Uh, early August was the cup series. Late August was the truck series. So, uh, and in 99, they put them both, they put trucks and what is now Xfinity. Yep. Um, on the June weekend together. So that's when we started doing both. Yeah. So that that worked out better for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go go get two shots at winning yeah, the race. Yeah, we never we never won them both on the same weekend. Yeah. But um but ninety nine was was we'd won the we'd won the truck race, um and ended up uh I we we finished second in the in the in the uh Bush Series race. Yep. To Dale Jr. Um, just got messed up on a race. He got me right near the end. Yeah, yeah. it was just we had a we had an issue. Um, but anyway, he uh, he beat us, and we were just then we dominated the thing, and we were in the motorhome. Brian and I and were, damn, can you believe how unlucky we were? Blah 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 blah. And Bully Hill Vineyards was a local New York State winery sponsor of sponsor race forever. They, yeah. yeah, and they and uh, Lillian Taylor who. Uh, who who is is still Bully Hill Vineyards? She she comes into the motorhome. She's trying to console us. But okay. oh, don't worry about it, guys. And she says, "You know what? You guys should come back with a cup car in August." Yeah. And I look at Brian, and Brian looks at me, and, <laughs> and sure. Well, we don't have a car. Well, can you build one? Sure. <laughs> of course we can. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up uh, we ended up coming back in in August uh, with a with a cup car. And yeah. was that your first cup start? Second. Okay. Yeah. 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 And during that time, you know, you, you obviously, you're winning races. Um, does that seem like a way to go? Or are you, are you trying to get a full-time ride in no, NASCAR? No, I wasn't because I, I mean, I, th I there, there was an opportunity to do it in uh, 2000, but I, I, you know, what happened in 97, so the, it, the month of August in '97 was a good one, where we won the truck race and won the one with the uh, the World Sports Car Series with the Ferrari and uh, a car that um, Ramel Ferry still has that car. He owned it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he still has the thing. Anyway, we um, I get a call. My contract's up with Chevy, so I went to uh, I went to to meet with with Herb Fischel and and Joe Negri, and they they talked to me about we're going to take a Corvette. And we want to go to Le Mans. We want you to lead this. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm in. <laughs> of course. So you're saying the the GM guys, they, they wanted uh, Chevy Chevy guys, they're building a race car. They already had this vision, and they were in the yeah. process of looking for drivers to go to Le Mans. Yeah. So it, it, uh, um, it essentially, you know, when I, when I, I look back at it, in in the 90, 90 certainly in 97 the gt class was kind of in flux the the mm -hmm. you know, where were the rules going to go and uh but you know herb herb had now and he'd worked for worked on it um for a number of years to get to get the go ahead the green light to uh to take a corvette to le mans and i'm like you kidding me how many times i've watched 
Steve McQueen movie, Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> the clock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At Shoppers World <laughs> Cinema in Brampton. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, no, it, it was it was cool. Yeah. And uh and I and I knew the I knew the Pratt Miller Pratt Miller was gonna be the team. And Pratt Miller had built the, the chassis for us in the in the Trans Am series, so I knew them a little bit. Yeah. And um, you know, they had a they had a fairly small facility in uh, in Michigan initially. And, um, yeah, we, in the fall, I guess it was November, November of 97, Chris Neifel did a shakedown. Chris was one of the drivers they were looking at. He did a shakedown, um, and then we went to Sebring and I, and I, we had a couple of days there and it was, um, yeah, we were, we were a long way from being competitive. Okay. But it was, yeah, no, it was, a. It was a pretty small operation then. Yeah, it was a it was a pickup truck, trailer, car for Corvette racing. Yeah, at the time. Wow. Yeah. In the yeah, C, in the C five at this point. Yeah, yeah, C five R. Yeah. yeah, it was a, it was early days. Yeah. Um, you know, we had we had uh, Ken Brown who was a who worked for GM as an engineer. He was one of the engineers initially. Um, yeah, no, it was it evolves from yeah basically. Four guys, a pickup truck, a trailer, uh, an engine guy from K Tech, <laughs> one laptop, and that was it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, who makes the big gains on the car? Is it a mix between engineering and, and driver input? Yeah, I would say a combination. You know, the the so the the goal was to um, just develop a car, right? And and we quickly figured out that this 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 particular iteration of the C5R wasn't going to be good enough. Okay. So they built another one and we essentially tested the entire 98 season. Right. And and the and the the rules began to stabilize because I think we we ended up changing I think the engine, tire, wheel package size changed once or twice. And um, and what we did was with some of the some of the events with on the on the Monday and Tuesday after after uh, and that was the the start of the American Le Mans series, um, we we tested after the weekend and that was a that was a good benchmark for us to to uh, um, not only for us but as a as a team but also for for Goodyear in terms of getting the getting data with compatibility with other rubber and, and mm-hmm. that that was a that was a big deal but certainly um, uh, it was and then you know through the through that. The '98 season, they you know they got uh, uh, the rest of the drivers. So my the driver in the the driver team for uh, with with me with Chris Neifel and uh, John Paul Jr. Okay. for the '99. And we weren't doing all we weren't doing all the races in '99 so season. You're still just working your way up to it as a team. Yeah, yeah. So we yep. were continuing to test, develop, and then you know our first race is the '99 Rolex 24. Right. Yeah, and um, we ended up. We ended up uh, on the podium in the in GTS, I think it was. GTS, yeah, yeah. But man, it was a it was a struggle. So, so. you still weren't up to speed. No, we were still off. We were still off, still off a little bit. Yep. Um, and and then it was uh, you know Porsche was dominant then, and then along came the and the the Vipers came over. Right. And they were they, they were that quick. Orca team. From, yeah. Yeah, they were really quick, and they were they were. They were the benchmark, so we ended up, you know, and the, and and the the evolution of uh, uh, certainly the seven liter engine was a result of of the ALMS, uh, you know, basically getting our getting our butts kicked by that eight liter V ten, yeah. and like guys, we need we need more. Well, you know, the radar gun says this. Well, and yeah, whatever. Uh, we were <laughs> yeah. we're not fast enough in a straight line. We're losing the et. You know, we're losing the. We might be getting mile an hour, but we're we're losing the drag race, mm. and that's just that's torque. So yep. you know, K Tech ended up uh, um, uh, building a seven liter, and and it was instant. I, I remember testing. It was it was part of a a series test, I think it was, and coming off of uh, turn seven at, at Road Atlanta. And getting around one of the Vipers, and I'm like on the radio, boys, we are in the game. <laughs> That's a good feeling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, and and obviously, if you're gonna go to Le Mans, I mean, you gotta 
You got to go down the straightaway. Yeah, you got to get down the straightaway. Yeah. 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 No, we, <clears throat> yeah, it was, um, yeah, no, that, and that was the goal. So 99, 99, we ended up, uh, we did, we did, uh, we did the Rolex 24. We did Sebring, did not do Le Mans the first year and, and uh, uh, some sprint races. And then um, 2000 again was, uh, was, was going back to, uh, you know, that the, the work we, we did, and we had that, we had the luxury in 99 of, because we weren't doing all of the ALMS races, the, you know, there was, there was no shortage of hard work by Chevy and uh, Pratt and Miller team. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, we to test in between and just continue to get better right. and, and, and then see how much our benchmark for progress was going to another race. Um, and we started to get, we started to get in the game. So early 2000s, you guys really come into yeah. it. And you yeah. Go so and yeah, 2000 at, uh, 2000 at Daytona, um, back then it was, and we had a, we had a, we had a new car and the car was fast. It was, uh, it was quick. I think we were on pole. Um, but we ended up second and we were on the wrong end of the, and it, we ended up, um, the GT cars, the, the GTS cars, uh, ended up, we were fighting for, for the overall win. Mm, wow. Yeah, we outlasted the prototypes. Yeah. Wow. And it was, that was really the first, the first long distance race for me that was a sprint race. Okay. Yeah. We, you what know, do you the, mean by that? Like coming, coming to the, the, the finish? No, we, Every time you're in the car, you're going as fast as you can go. Oh, I see. What you're there saying. was no, yeah, there, the quality used, of the yeah, car. Yeah, the, the used to be. It used to be okay. We need to yeah. not use second gear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or use it. You're using it once a lap, and and you got to be saving brakes and don't get on the curbs. And no, in yeah. 2000, it was we were we were fast, and then we had a we had a fueling issue, so we were we kept getting behind the Vipers, but we were quicker. Right. And, and we got to within, uh, it was just under, it was 30.8 seconds at the end for the, for the overall win. It was in, in, uh, the Viper team ended up winning and I was just so crushed, you know, that as a team, um, we'd come this close to an overall win and would this ever, would it, this may never happen again. Right. And we were so bummed and then we did the next year. Yeah. Yeah, and that was at that Daytona again. Two thousand one, and yeah. you guys won overall. Yep, yep. And what was happening with the prototypes? Um, I I don't think they were. I mean, they were they were certainly fast, but there wasn't a. Or they weren't super reliable back then. You mm-hmm. know the. There was probably more more factory money back then in that, brief era being spent in GT cars. Yep. Yeah, and and certainly, you know the the focus that Dodge put on their program and what. Chevrolet did with the Corvette program. It was, I mean, these were quick cars. Right. You know, we're doing, uh, I'm thinking we were doing what, 144, 144s lap time back then. Something like that, 43s um, at Daytona. And typically, typically the, you know, the, the prototypes are more fragile and um, they just don't last them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, out of your all-time racing highlights is, I'm guessing, and I could be totally wrong, is Le Mans, winning Le Mans, is that, is that a highlight? Yeah, that, that happened the same, uh, same year. So yeah. it was, it, you know, winning overall at Daytona was, was, was really cool um, because it was also the first time I got to know the Earnhardts. So, they, right. so Dale Jr. and Sr. Were in, the, were, in the, were in the other car with Kelly Collins and Andy Pilgrim. And that's 01. Yes, 2001. 01. Yeah. So how does that come about? That's just Chevrolet saying, "Hey, you know, road Dale. course racing." Or Dale, Dale wanted to do it because Dale road C. course racing was becoming more and more important in NASCAR, or or he was kind of <sighs> looking outside. Or I think, I mean, he was a big Corvette fan, yep. and when he saw the Corvette program start up, um, he wanted to he wanted to he wanted to run right. And uh, and I th- it was there was talk in two thousand, but I think he had some surgery that he couldn't. Uh, it had to be done on the off season, so he couldn't do the Rolex Twenty Four then. I think that was the deal. But then the next year, yeah, they put it together. So. And what was it like running with with junior and senior? Yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, the, you know, what, you know, when, when I look back on, you know, every, every every event, 
and and where where things changed for me it's it was it's everything is relationships right and and you know, whether it's uh you know meeting meeting bob and helen mcgraw of an aer manufacturing the help that they provided you know you know jim o'donnell at mckenzie the, the folks at sunoco you name it the, the you know jack roush tom gloy along the way um the you know uh buzz buzz it with, with american equipment helping me out with my first nascar uh, truck stuff and, and here was a, another opportunity where you know we 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 first met them at uh, every every year corvette corvette racing would do a a, a two or three day test at sebring in november prior to the um u.s thanksgiving okay and that was sort of our you know the first time we'd get get prepped for for the for the next season and uh, so that's where the deal was put together and they came and they came and drove and tested and i was doing a bunch of tire testing and and didn't get a whole lot of time to to chat with with uh, dale senior in particular but we 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 hit it off and um it's really the you know meeting meeting um uh, dale senior led to me driving for dei Right, right, because you ran yeah. some nationwide stuff. Or well, I ran for Dale Jr. So that was so meeting. You know, obviously, I mean, Dale Jr. in two thousand one is probably was he twenty five years old. 26? Yeah, yeah, he's a kid. Yeah, and uh, and senior just he, uh, you know, he was just a larger than life guy, and and uh, um, but and absolutely loved it. You know, there's I I, re- I remember seeing uh, some of the in car shots when he was out. And he's wearing his open open face helmet, and he's driving in the rain, and he's just smiling. That's great. <laughs> anyway, it was uh, it, it was super cool, and, and so the so for us to, you know, you know, getting getting to meet uh, getting to meet them meet them both, and um, and you know, senior when he came to the podium, he I mean he was you know big bear hug. He was as happy that we we wanted as anybody. Yeah, yeah, he was he was a. He was he was uh, he was keen to to continue to do this, but he was also he also was was keen to have me drive for him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, and tragically, he was killed just a few weeks later. Right. But um, the 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 cool part of the story is, uh, in uh, spring of two thousand three, I think it was spring, it was oh three for sure. Spring maybe, um, late spring. Uh, Steve Park got hurt. And I got the call from from Ty Norris at uh, at DEI to drive the Pennzoil car, and he basically said, "Hey, you know, Senior always wanted you to drive one of his cars." That's cool. And yeah, so and that was at the Glen. It was Sonoma in the Glen. Sonoma and yeah. the Glen. Yeah. Okay. So wow. Sonoma, we should have won. Yeah. yeah. So I mean that that had to have been a good car. It was a good car. Yeah, we qualified third, um, and uh, were. My recollection is uh, getting the getting the lead, and we we're coming up to our our last pit stop, and um, Tony Gibson was the crew chief, and they were uh, the spotter uh, Steve Neal was uh, spotting for us, um, and Steve's Steve's like, hey, everybody behind you is pitting, you need to pit, and we just waited too late. Yeah. We ended up uh, okay. Pit next. Out comes the caution. Oh, and you don't. You know, in NASCAR, you don't want to pit yeah. on a yeah. on a. You want to pit during green. Mm-hmm. And and I remember when they. I remember going into turn eleven. Uh, as we're approaching the it, pits are open. Behind the pace car, I pull out and I'm I'm heading down pit lane. I'm looking in the mirror to see how many cars are following me. There's nobody. Ugh. So. Anyway, we ended straight up straight to the back. Yeah, we ended up uh, we we ended up finishing seventh, but uh, I think we restarted thirty second or thirty third. It was just, but it was such a good car. It was. I mean, it just that's where I learned. Yeah, you can be fast and all that, but man, it's it's to win at the cup level that the stars needed to be aligned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they weren't quite, no. but it was. Uh, it was. It was. It was. It was fun to 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 work with. You know, such a great team and and. Uh, in the in the crew with with DEI then and and got to do it a few more times but I don't but yeah and that, and that led to 
driving for uh, driving for Junior. And so you kept up. You, did you keep in in contact with Junior after? Yeah, after those? yeah, just yeah, not not uh, not not a whole bunch, but certainly you know email, occasional text or whatever. Yep. Um, and and which still happens, but uh, not to the, you know, we weren't uh, weren't super close, but he was a, uh, um, you know, he was. He was, uh, um, you know, just a uh, anyway, different than his dad, but yeah. but um, you know, an absolute uh, an absolute ambassador totally. for, for for NASCAR, and and yeah, losing his dad, he 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 took that on, yeah. you know, and, and he's and still to this day, but um, yeah, no, he's a he's a he's a great kid, beca- has become a uh, a terrific uh, a terrific ambassador. For, not just for NASCAR, but for the sport. To be I, I completely you. agree. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, he's an absolute uh, uh, stand-up guy. And uh, um, <laughs> so, do you do you still work like with with Chevy and and Cup guys? Like, do you still go and and do they call all you? The, all the kids. All the kids. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, fast forward here. Um, at the end of my uh, tenure, I, I was going to retire from Corvette racing at the end of '08. Yep. And the uh, Long way, long way around the barn here. We ended up with with Chevy, uh, starting a Corvette school with uh, the owners at uh, Spring Mountain right. Motor Resort and Country Club, uh, west of Vegas. And it was, and that anyway, it was fairly meager beginnings. But we got it, we got it established in October of '08 with with help from Chevy, and then uh, and then Michelin, and <clears throat> became, uh, um, you know, as 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 we got sort of better known with the, with the school and, and um, you know, we would, I would help anybody who wanted, wanted help. Yeah. But then it, it became a thing where in the, with the, with the seventh generation cars mm-hmm. where they would bring out, bring out the drivers, mostly all the, 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 the young guys from the, from the truck series and Xfinity series. And for a day there or so at, uh, at, at Spring Mountain, we still, we still do that. To this day, so that started in. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna guess maybe 2012 was when we started doing that. Okay. And yeah. do, do, do they bring you out to the track ever, like for the road course stuff, or do they keep you on speed dial during those <coughs> weekends? I yeah, there was a few. Uh, there was a few that I did. Yeah, with um, yeah, helping uh, both the uh, Childress and Junior Motorsports guys mm-hmm. uh, a little bit on uh, a couple of race weekends. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, once they get, they're all. They're all super talented when they get. They, they all get have busy. simulators now. Yeah, there's that. Um, that that's some of the some of the interesting stuff we've done as well is working with some of the some of the kids with uh, with uh, the the simulator in uh, Huntersville, North Carolina. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's it's been it's been fun to see, you know, the the development and the progress that that these young guys make. But they're all they're all incredibly talented. Oh and, yeah, and it doesn't take them long to catch on. Yeah, and they're. You know that was the 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 wake up call for our team of instructors was at the school was and I kind of warned them. Yeah. Okay. This isn't going to be like the the school people. These guys will be they will be sideways coming through the last corner on the first lap. Yeah. So it's going to be <laughs> they're they're going to be on it. That's the only thing. That's the only way they they know how to go is is as fast as they can go. Well, and it's it's so. funny those young kids coming to NASCAR, and and you're absolutely right because there's no practice, there's no test days. You don't. It's not sports not anymore. Racing. Yeah. You don't show up on the Wednesday. Yeah. You know, you show up on the Saturday yeah. or the Sunday, and you unload, and you you better qualify. Yeah. Like it's it's, got, it's you know these days it's got to be so so tough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, when I was when I was doing doing the doing the part time work, we were able to test. Yeah. Yeah, so get you get your get get your feet wet, but yeah, some of them, some of the you know the, the simulator is helpful f- for these kids in in prep uh, for an event when they don't have a lot of track time, and certainly the you know the focus on um, the technique is is something that we work on. Yeah, and Chevy, you know, we had uh, Chevy ended up getting uh, Camaro uh, uh, ZL ones for us at the school just just for the for the NASCAR driver training. Oh, good. So, yeah, a little, little more, a uh, little more relevant. Yeah. So yeah, for yeah. sure. I think I went down in January of '09 and did your school there, and there was a couple, couple Arca guys there. With oh, us. is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. So I would have been. Where the heck was I? You weren't there. You weren't there. You were somewhere else. I was. Uh, oh, nine? It was, was I, yeah, they, it was might have been just dark, opened. Might have been Daytona. Yeah. No, it was good. It wasn't. Uh, I don't think I drove one through the. Well, not the lawn, through the desert. I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, we didn't have very many. We only had one guy wreck one. Um, but generally, yeah, they, they, you know, you let them, you let them go out and then you pull the reins in after. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of get your feet wet, you know, that, and, but now here's what we have to focus on. And yeah, it was, uh, um, and it was fun. We've had, we had some of the, some of the cup guys. I, I don't, I don't right seat. But I've I've sat I've sat in the right seat with uh, with uh, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Jimmy Johnson. Um, so only select guys. You yeah. get in the right seat with. Well, th- I mean, I, I do it with some of the some of the some of the NASCAR kids just to it, you know to or or take them take them for a lap you know to uh, and if they're if they're struggling but generally yeah I don't I don't I'm not that's fair super enough. comfortable but yeah certainly you know. When Kyle Kyle Larson came to the school, he and he and Chase they were. This was this was I think 2012, maybe 13. Wow. Yeah, and um, yeah, just green kids, but super talented. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, just looking in all the right places, you know, hand position, just how they knew exactly what they how they wanted to sit in the car, and yeah, yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah. So you don't get in the right seat, I'm assuming, because of uh, you know what can happen in a race car. <laughs> what 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 was your biggest wreck ever in your career? Ooh, um, there's a there's a there's a few. Uh, it was upside down once. Uh, had a had a big one. Had a big one at Le Mans, but um, the car came off better than I did. I think probably the most Im- most impressive wreck was I was at Texas Motor Speedway <laughs> in a truck. I uh, coming off a of two blew a tire. Oh jeez. Yeah, and you're going 170 something miles an hour. Yeah, and it was at night, and you're. I I recall looking in the mirror, knowing the wall's coming, and when you're going backwards with absolutely no sense of control, you really, rem- you're now think, man, am I going fast? <laughs> this is going to be, and I think it was about a 30 degree angle backwards into the wall. And the most impressive thing that I recall is the noise it made on impact. It was like an explosion when oh, it yeah. hit the wall. Yeah, it was. Anyway. And were you hurt? Nope. Nope. Fortunately, so, yeah, going going in backwards is the hot ticket. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I agree. Especially then, <laughs> yeah, it was, that was mm, pre Hans device or right around that time. Pre Hans uh, device, I guess. Yep, and and safer barrier. Yeah, it was yeah. concrete. Yeah, That's that was fast. yeah to to hit. Yeah, it was just the 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 imp, the noise, and then the you know the sparks and, but yeah, the the to this day vividly going backwards, thinking and seeing how fast you're going, everything's going this way now <laughs> yeah. like oh this is and boom <laughs> yeah. yeah i remember seeing uh uh kenny kenny wilden drive it into corner two in, at most port in a trans am car whoops have you did you know no. what i'm talking about yeah no he, i never he broke his hans device in half <sighs> it's like 2001 wow. you get off there oh wow get on the lawn and it you know, when you get on yeah, the lawn, it feels like yes, you've you're sped up 15 yeah, miles an yeah, hour. <laughs> yeah, you're not slowing down and you're not turning. Yeah. <laughs> you're going straight. Yes. <laughs> so you never got hurt. Um, the, uh, oh, yeah, there was the, uh, I forgot about the bus, probably why. Um, Porsche, Porsche wreck in, in the, at the Halifax Street Circuit in a, in a 944 Turbo M backwards. Yeah, that was a thing caught on fire. And I was uh, badly concussed, and that yep. was probably the first time. Yeah, I had a couple of concussions along the way. The um, when I flipped the Players GM car in '89, I I uh, uh, bruised. I hurt my ribs. They were, nothing was. I ended up going to the hospital. Nothing was broken, but man, it was sore. Um, and then that was. I remember. Then when uh, in the Trans Am car, I got 
I got in it, I'd missed practice uh, because of being at the hospital. I got back in time to qualify and I, and I didn't qualify super well. You know, we were in the top 10, but yeah. should have been, should have been better than that. And I just, it was so painful left side and it's all right hand corners. Yeah. So I ended up, we ended up uh, padding up the, padding up the seat so I could kind of lean into it. And that was, uh, yeah, when I, the one and only compliment I got from Jack Roush, he leaned in the window in victory <laughs> at that track and he says, hey, you play pretty good, Hurt. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Good Canadian compliment there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, just banging your head a little bit. Yeah, we were yeah, pretty fortunate. So you were running, you ran a, a good number of ovals or an odd number of ovals in the truck and, and Xfinity as well? No, never. Just <clears> the truck. Yeah, I did a, I did an ARCA race at Charlotte. And then a few, a few of the truck races on old. Yeah, did the first, did the first uh, truck race at Texas Motor Speedway. Yeah, yeah, and it was, uh, it was fun. You like so you like? Yeah, it. no, I, I I liked it. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, the nobody nobody liked Texas Motor Speedway then. I didn't know any better. Yeah. I thought it was cool. <laughs> so well. we ended up. Uh, I think it, I think we were in the top ten, maybe seventh. Yeah, uh, something like that. So but you had no problem on the ovals. There's just. You've done left-handers before. No, it it, uh, it it certainly was it certainly was different, mm -hmm. and I you know the television doesn't do those the the drivers nor the cars uh, that what's going on. It's it's pretty violent, and the cars are moving around a lot. Yeah, uh, especially in the especially in the air, and, and when you're you know it, uh, the, especially the high speed stuff, it's it's not super comfortable. It's moving around. Um, and that was, you know, the, I think the thing that I learned the most, you know, with, uh, you know, working with, working with, uh, particularly with Brian Patty, when we did, we struggled badly at one of the, at a, at a truck race and, and he, you know, that, the, there was nothing, there was nothing you could do as a driver. And I, I, I learned that the hard way at, uh, at Loudon in a cup car that yeah, there's, yeah. yeah, just, you the car's got to work for you yeah. and you can get to a certain point and in terms of the raw speed and depending on the type of track, you're just, it's, you're, you're a passenger really. Yeah. 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 So it's, and that's, and, and that's where experience comes in, you know, the changing, changing the groove in the race, you know, where, to, where to run, what, what you need the car to do. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, no, it would just, it would just have taken time. But the, you know, for me, there was an opportunity uh, to go full time cup potentially in two thousand, and we were just starting to get going with the Corvette. Yeah, and and I thought, you know, forty years old, forty one years old, new team, rookie driver, probably not a good idea. That's why I stayed put. Yeah, yeah. That's a long season too. It's a lot and of races. Yeah, if I'd have got to the end of the first season, <laughs> yeah. but I know for sure I would have I would have lost my seat at Corvette Racing. So right. Right. I think we made the right call. Uh, I tend to agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I also have a family. Yeah. 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 And then that's the thing, you know, we'd like to, I don't know if people realize like the difference, you know, running in Canada is, it's great. You get to run during the summer and you could play hockey in the winter, but <laughs> to go run, you know, cup Xfinity or truck racing, mm -hmm. that's, that's 38 weekends. That is full time. It's a grind. Yeah. No. And, and we looked, um, you know, back when when I started racing full time um, uh, in in the U.S., it was looking around for, you know, once I once I pretty much when I got the Chevy contract in fall of '94. Um, okay, where's where's the where's the most central place to live? Mm -hmm. And it was all it was looking at, you know, where to live and then and where I needed to get to, where all you know the the most direct non-stops and there was no reason to leave Toronto. Yeah. You know, and, and I was of all the drivers, the quarterback racing, I lived the closest, you know, the team's based in the, in the Detroit area. So, I mean, I, I used to drive to the shop a couple times a week, Yeah, you know, the, um, but the only other, yeah, when we were, we were looking at if the cup thing came together, we, we actually went to, to Linda and I, and I, I don't know if we had the kids with us or not, but um, yeah, we looked, we were looking at uh, 
you know, what the school system was like in the sort of North in Mooresville area, yep. looking at price of housing and then, yeah. but yeah, for sure. If you're doing that full time, you need to be, you need to be right there. Oh yeah. You yeah, need to be just, living in yeah, Mooresville yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 So on the NASCAR, so I've got a couple questions to do with the NASCAR. For starters, like, you know, obviously with your rapport with Dale and, and throughout the garage, y- you know, you have a reputation as, as the most gentleman guy, absolute pro, <laughs> never ruffled any feathers. Right. <laughs> Do you have anything to contradict that statement? Did you ever dump anyone on purpose in the NASCAR or, or get into a late race or after the race altercations? No, I, I once. Um, but I didn't. It wasn't on purpose. It uh uh, the only guy that got, the only guy that got mad at me, uh, it was plenty that going the other way, um, <laughs> uh, was Kyle Petty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, what happened there? I got into him in in turn ten at the Glen. Uh, he was on a different strategy, and he was trying to he was trying to nurse old tires, and and a fuel fuel either on a, you know fuel economy run yep. and it's late and I'm. I've got fresh tires and I'm trying to got to go. Yeah. Got to go. And I got into him and, and, uh, and turned 10 and he was not happy. You put him in the wall. I think he might've hit the fence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't remember. He didn't hit pit in, did he? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't, didn't. That didn't hit him very hard, but it, it yep. those cars, it, it didn't take much. Yeah. You know, especially when they're no, you know, when you're in the brake zone and they, come across and the nose is already all the weights on the nose and you're yep. off the throttle. So there's no weight on the back. So, but no, I, I generally, and I, and I, I, I made a, you know, I would consciously, um, try to stay out of trouble yep. with, because, uh, I'm a part-time guy. I need, to, I need, I need to be, yeah, I'm going to be, I feel like I'm a threat. I can win, yep. but I'm not, I'm not going to run over anybody to get there right you know, i i trust my uh my my racecraft right to be able to get it done get it done cleanly does so. that d- and does your opinion has your opinion changed or or is that just you know your own opinion like of how races sometimes get won now in nascar how do you feel about that um yeah there, i mean there's the, the occasional the occasional uh bump for the win yeah no it's it all i can say is that there's zero skill of running into somebody, mm-hmm. moving somebody out of the way. The skill isn't making a, isn't making a super clean, bold pass. Yep. So it takes zero skill to run somebody over. Yep. So. No, oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I was watching, uh, uh, preparing for this. I was watching uh, probably one of your later races in the nationwide deal. Now Xfinity at Montreal. Kyle Busch wrecked you. Uh huh. Well, that was a couple to go. Like you're, you're looking good, and just got inside you yep. and dumped you for mm-hmm. it was fifth place or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I recall that. Yep, and had a chat with him afterwards. But yeah, it, and and so, you know that was that was uh, one of the uh, one of the rare ones. But a, I think to some degree that's part of the part of the problem is, is they know they're not going to see you the next week. Right. So I mean, you could tell that happens with you know just just after you got out of it with guys like Villeneuve and Tagliani mm-hmm. they'd go down they'd run up front right. they're in a Penske car or whatever and the the you know the guys who were there week in and week out said I don't want to deal with you at the end yeah. of the race and <clears> well that was and that was all also part of part of our strategy you know in in the conversations with uh, certainly with in the early days with with Brian Patty was making sure that that we had enough we had enough car because inevitably there was going to be a caution late. Yep. And that was just part of the strategy, making sure we saved enough tire and and I'm getting away. To get I'd, away from yeah, him. Yeah, you got to get away from him. Yep. Yep. Because yep. yeah. all your races, you never really had, did you have any real close races or did you have a comfortable little gap kind of on the, on those road course wins in the? Um, yeah, no, some of them were, <coughs> some of them were close. And, and generally, generally the, um, yeah, the, when you're, I mean, it always depends on who you're racing, but generally, when you're when you're running for uh, running at the front, um, you just you just you got to be you got to be smart about it. Yeah. And if they're 
Yeah, they'd be, they could be relatively close, but you don't want to be let them be close enough to be able to get a bumper on you. Yeah. Because, you know, that somebody would. They'll do it. Yeah. Just, or, or just move you enough to be able to get up beside you. Yeah. You know, that, and that's, some of that's, you know, some of that's part of the, part of what goes on. Yeah. So, and, and yeah, if I, if I use the bumper, yeah, but not, not necessarily to spin anybody, mm -hmm. but to let them know if somebody's blocking and giving you a hard time for no, no good reason, or you got to let them know you're there. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're getting them a little of the bumper just to, just to rattle them a little bit and remind them no, you're, for sure. you're in the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, it's, and it's funny cause I, in, in my mind, I think it's changed. I think Kevin Harvick said this about, cause his, uh, his son, I guess is, is growing up racing now and he's running go-karts and, yeah. and, and he's, he's talking. And he's good. And he's, yeah, yeah. He won yeah. the super nuts. Yeah. Um, but there's uh, another guy I drove for in, in the city. It's Kevin. Right. Yeah. 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 A couple of years. Yeah. He was, but super what, guy. But what he was saying is is how the race craft craft has changed. And I mean, even even since I was young, you know, if a guy was blocking on lap one, two, three, four, whatever, up until the last two laps, get out of the way. What are you doing? You know. But now it's every lap, every position, you know, full on. You look at Formula One. You look at, and that's yeah. just how these you know kids are are coming up now. It's 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 changed. Uh, yeah, to some degree. Um, I think I think the uh, part of it is is the popularity, you know. There's the the pressure of gotta win now, mm -hmm. uh, or or gotta do well right now. Yep. Um, yeah. Patience is not rampant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, I think I think the uh, there there are still you know I I, I think about uh. Know the, you know some of the truck races at our place at, at Kenny Tire Motorsport Park and and you know the yeah there's been some there's been some wild ones but there's also been some where they these guys were you know they're side by side through eight nine ten swap swap it back and forth yeah and and still side by side all the way through you know ten coming to the checker flag and it and and that's to me is is more exciting than just yeah, a huge, a huge wreck. But yeah, that, no, that was the best finish. That was 2014. It was Ryan Blaney, Ryan and, Blaney. and someone. Well, he won, so I yeah. forget who he was running yeah. against. Um, that was an incredible finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I think they traded the lead twice between nine and ten, something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But oh, they wow. both stayed on the track, you know. But right. So if you were, you know, if you were going to go design, say you had a magic wand and you were going to go design. Uh, a racing series how would you go about it what what would it look like i mean uh, you know obviously you're gonna have a whole ton of prize money and but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. what would you model it after or or how you know how would it how would it look how would it how does it make sense where did you get this question from gary <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea um you know i i i, I think you've got to continue to have uh you know that the the inclusive um, elements of of a racing team. You know, I mean, look at look at Formula One, and you know the the individual teams are you know, and they're and what they have to build. You know, they're and yet you still have. You know, the 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 two best are still super close and totally different mm -hmm. race cars. So yeah. I th so that you know that. That to me is is still a big part of it. The the you know being able to um, being able to test and prepare. Uh, I'm working with working with the working with the crew, you know the uh, the guys and girls that are part of the team. Engineering um, to me was that was that was the a, a big part of the, the 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 enjoyment for me was in the in the development phase. You're right. And and that was the the really cool part of being with. Corvette racing from um, from its infancy was was seeing not only uh, yeah our, our progress develop with the car but also with all the people right and and grow and adding and parts and pieces and and people to uh, uh, to get better and 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 that whole the whole process of of getting to the point of 
of getting your first wins and and then okay now we've done that now how do we stay there and i think that's you know the um you know the, the pratt miller crew they were the they were they were a great bunch to work with and um you know they who who knew that here we are in 2022 and corvette racing is still a still an entity yeah which is which is which is amazing because yeah. typically you know in the in the in the road racing era that that uh, i was in, in in the 80s certainly the 80s and 90s uh, um the you know manufacturers would come and go yeah and you know the what what chevrolet's done and with the corvette brand in in maintaining this uh through now fourth generation car c5 c6 7 yeah. now a, now the mid-engine c8 race car it's just it's incredible right to be to be that committed um most underrated driver most underrated driver doesn't have to be totally off the radar i've got one in my head most underrated what form of racing any kind any kind of racing yeah. okay so i follow both nascar and formula one well, it doesn't um, even have to be the highest level. Yeah, Could no, be, true yeah. enough. True enough, true enough. Um, boy, oh boy. Uh, I, I, you know, in, in Formula One, I think, you know, Lando Norris was a guy that was not really on the radar till, you know, a guy who was considered a top five, Danny, Daniel Ricardo, yep. became his teammate. Yeah. Um, you know, he now, he then got on the radar. Um well, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, I, through my, through the, through my karting series and, and seeing, seeing kids develop and, and, you know, the, it were Wickens, Morad, Marcelli, these are some of the kids that were in our karting series over the years. Um, and, and, and understanding, you know, what, what was, what was the difference between, yes, they were super talented, but how, you know, how did they get, to that next level that's pr that's probably the um the the most interesting uh, part for me is seeing the seeing the kids in terms of the that 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 added ingredient that is the difference between being fast mm -hmm. winning races and contending for a championship the that that toughness that that never give up you know and that's and i the guy that is uh the best at that, Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, he's just give him an inch and he'll take a mile. Yeah, you yeah. just you just can't give him anything. So, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, that's good. Out of, out of your list there, I would have said Wickens. Oh no, for sure. No, no, no. Robert was, uh, yeah, no, he like just you know, what, I, just I, what yeah. he did when he went oh, to no, IndyCar was just yeah, no off the radar. And 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 I said this uh, not that long ago in a. And when they asked about talent, not necessarily underrated, uh, Robert's oh, yeah, not no, under, no, no, but, no, you know, no. talk to us about some of the talented and Wickens was the top of my list. And, and, yeah. you know, with, 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 you know, call them kids to, from Kyle Larson to chase, uh, you know, um, Hamrick, the, the Dillons that, yep. that we work with and certainly in, in, uh, in Robert just, I think he, you're right. It, it I wouldn't call him underrated, but he doesn't. He doesn't get the credit mm -hmm. that he deserved based on his first year at IndyCar. You know the, um, and it and it, yeah that that is uh, for sure something that that it you know every once in a while they'll we'll, they'll talk about somebody oh you know he's rookie and he's in the top ten and I'm thinking to myself yeah well uh, let's see yeah there was this rookie that came from tin tops in in Germany yeah. <laughs> That put it on the pole at St. Pete in his first IndyCar race, and other than a lap, two laps to go restart, would have won. Yeah. And then it was, and then even then it was, well, you know, he's good on a road course. And then he goes to Phoenix, and darn near won that. Got outsmarted by Tim Sindrick and uh, Joseph Newgarden. Yeah. But but yeah, no, I think Robert Robert is, uh, um, you know, I think back to you know watching him in in karting, and he just was, uh, the the desire that he had was, and so that special. That's your yeah, and skill, yeah. and and so you, your your 
perfect ingredients in the cake of be, being a pro race car driver, being a su- successful pro race car driver. You know, a- not anyone, you know, there's a whole ton of fast guys. There's a whole ton of guys with talent. But you're saying just the perseverance to keep yep. going. Yep. That's yep. the yeah, mix. Just uh, that, that, that even, even when you're, you know, you're, you're wrecking qualifying and, and it's, you got to get it together. Yeah. Um, or it's a, it's, you've got a limited opportunity here to, to, you know, just a few races to show what you can do. You, you got to do it, but, but it's the, you know, for me, I always felt like that's the, give me that pressure. Yep. You know, and, and everybody and all the drivers that I work with at, on the Corvette team would say the same thing. That's, that's you, you know, give me the ball. You want to be the guy that when there's three hours to go in a 24 hour race, they're the, you're the, you're the one that get, they're putting in. Right. Yeah, give me the ball coach. Yep. You know, so that, yeah, I mean, you, you, you have to be like that. You have to be. Yep. You know, it's, so. I forget who said it and I, you know, at a driver's meeting who, who, who's the fastest guy here and hopefully everyone puts <laughs> up their hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Reality may be a little different, <laughs> yeah. but, but yeah, you know, no, you're I, not going to win a race unless yeah. you think that. Yeah, no, I, it, it's, it's, I guess the frustration when you know you, you you talked about the whole racing series thing and and um, yeah I just I would just love to see you know we we've got to try to figure out in Canada beyond beyond what the beyond what the Pinty series has but other forms of uh, um, you know Chris Pye is doing a great job with uh, uh, with Michelin and the in the and the touring car stuff yep F-E-L. but. Um, you know, there there needs to be something that's that's affordable and and a, and a quality jump from carts to cars. Yeah. Because you know, I'm, I've been involved with karting for 20 years. Right. And and karting's in really good shape, and there's some good kids. Yep. You know, there's uh um, but it's it's you know when they're when they're in, you know, going from uh, the four stroke to two stroke. And in the in the you know senior two stroke class, at fifteen sixteen years old, then what? Yeah. In this country, unless you've got some money behind a, you, a bunch of money, yeah. And, and it, you know, because they is it 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 no longer do we have the the homegrown series like we used to have, mm-hmm. you know. And I think the you know the. Uh, sp- you know, spending time with the in the Pinty series last year, great series, really yeah. really enjoy, it. and just some good good really good quality drivers there. It re- it reminds me a little bit of the Players GM series when you've got, you know, guys at the front with all kinds of experience from other places that are are setting the bar for the rest of them. Yeah. Um, and and I th- I think that's cool, but you know we we used to have, uh, uh you know, great open wheel series right. here and, and that's and, non-existent and, and no we don't we don't have that and and you know I, I see the kids in in uh in our motor Master series that that are that are you know where do i go next right it's a, it's a tough one yeah but you know i i think if you're if you really believe um and you're and you're good enough somebody will find you yep i really believe that he, you know, he, you know, I, I think about the odds of me making a living, even from, you know, trying to do that in the eighties, um, pretty slim, but you gotta, gotta believe, never say never well, or never good. quit. <laughs> well, that's a good way to end it. I, pre- I appreciate good. you coming out. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun and, you know, I missed a whole ton of stuff. I mean, you're obviously, you know, you ran the Ron Fellows karting championship forever you're a part owner in, in CTMP, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, doing your racing schools. Uh, yeah. You're one of those guys who might never retire. Well, it, you know, again, it goes back to, and this is, this is a, the, the good advice part is, is the it, relationships and the importance of them. And, and, you know, um, just be yourself. And, and I've been super fortunate to be, you know, to, to be able to have, you know, a great opportunity to, to make a living, uh, get paid to race everything from sports cars to NASCAR. And again, the, you know, get into, uh, um, you know, meet some great people, uh, along the way for the, you know, the next phase, which is, uh, you know, the, you know, helping, uh, helping with, uh, being, being partners with, uh, Carla Fidani and, and my wife with, with, 
with and Canadian Tire yep. with uh, and and a rebirth of of then Motorsport now Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and and then uh, and then the school again meeting meeting people it's 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 relationships or everything and you just got to keep plugging away on that side of it. So. That's good. There you have it. Easy steps to become a pro race car driver. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Thank you, Gary.